Do you guys know that the Earth is drifting away from the sun? Yeah, slightly. At, at, this is the mistake I made at, at the Oxford because they, they wouldn't allow me to bring my notes or anything. So I said the drift was the drift was six inches a year. It's point six inches a year. Mm -hmm. So if you add up how long it would take the Earth to move, because and all of the planets in every solar system is drifting away from their primary at this same exact rate like 1.5 1. 1. centimeters. So this is a universal expansion that's happening with everything moving away. So them saying, the and the Webb Telescope have proven that those galaxies couldn't have formed right. 13, 14 billion years ago. But if you would just add up linearly how long it would take the Earth to go from the sun to 93 million miles away, it's nine trillion, hold on, 5,280 feet in a mile, 12 inches in a foot. Therefore, it's 60, one mile equals 63,360 inches. So the number of years that it will take for the Earth to move one mile is 105,600 years. So that in order for the Earth to reach where we are at 93 million miles, it would take 9,820,800,000,000 years for the Earth to get here. Likewise, Mars, at 147 million miles away from the sun, it would take 15,780,480,000,000 years for Mars to get where it was. Mars was here in the Goldilocks zone. Mm. And now Venus is going to inherit the Goldilocks zone next. But once Earth moves to where Mars is, Venus is going to slowly move and will be right here. Maybe five or six trillion years, Venus will be right here. And humanoids will appear again and unwind wow. the same way. And that asteroid belt that we have right now mm -hmm. between Mars and Jupiter, that used to be a planet. And I believe that they had humanoids that developed on there the same way that everything, that's the periodic table. These things happen according to periodicity. They happen under regular events. You change the motion and pressure conditions, the, the crystallation changes. We call it a different element, but it's the same substance like my hand is one substance, but if I do it like this and do it like this and do it like this, it looks like a whole different thing. And they can call it a different element, but it's the same element under different motion and pressure conditions. I believe that Sirius, Sirius used to be a planet when it was here and the humanoids on there didn't recognize that we don't have a solid core. Everything expands as a sphere and no sphere in our universe, no bubble has a solid core. We're perceiving it as a solid core, but there is not a solid core there. There's a, just a bubble. And at CERN, that hydron collider, that particle accelerator, I believe they did the same thing, and they popped their planet. Really? Just take it. If you add up all of the weight of the mass of those of of the asteroids in the asteroid belt, it will probably equal the same mass as that of Mars. So you believe that the sun is the origin of these planets? Of all the planets. Every it's, solar every, every star solar system. within its solar system gives birth to all of these other planets. This is what Walter Russell had talked about. This is what Neil deGrasse and they attacked him for because he talked about the drift, this mm -hmm. natural drift, and that wasn't it more didn't make more sense. And they didn't have the idea of dark matter and dark energy then. Right. They didn't even come up with that. And now we understand four percent of the universe is visible. Right. And seventy five percent of it, seventy four something, seventy four seventy percent of it is dark energy and twenty something percent of it is dark matter unperceivable things and they say that's because they needed to figure out how would they get the spin and create galaxies why do they the hold spiral together galaxies. right